welcome to episode 17 of the Youth Squad Legends series with Chesterfield. I'm your host, still moderately infectious but feeling better. I know, it's a long-winded name, blame my parents. We are down to a current budget of £1 million. After improving some of the players in our first team, big winner is Rico Walden, going from 28 to 32 overall. Billy Blissett got a small improvement and the rest of the focus was on Natali Ruocco. Into the Youth Academy section, our last youth tournament, we went on and won. I now believe what we were actually missing wasn't cohesion, but speed. Bringing in 80 pace Tony Oggiogio really made a difference. And boy, has that lad got a power shot on him. You can see the full matches of our youth tournaments over on the Cutsy Extra channel. Link down in the pinned comments. First scout reports are back from our brand new scouting team. And it's probably no surprise that Rowley Sepp has done a mad. Hang on, he's not from Chile. Posh Cutsy, do you care to explain? Hello there, Posh Cutsy here. How are you doing? After reviewing the footage from last season, it seems like we didn't pick up a Nicaraguan. So I told Rolly Sepp to fix that issue. Oh, and for the scenario today, it seems like one random player has taken a dodgy supplement. They will be excluded from the games in this episode, but their overall will be boosted to whatever you roll on a die. Okay. Doodles! Sound, yeah, this is a fantastic report. Rowley set back in business, showing why he's the absolute goat at this stuff. We've got Yerko Torres with an overall, an overall of 60 to 80. Six foot three might not have the best potential, but just as a base, as a starting point, that is magical stuff. Then the central midfielder, Marcos Bendenanya. Can't really complain that much with this player either. It's just going to be a real headache to try and fit all these central midfielders into the team. We'll ignore these guys because they are not up to much, but and it is a big round juicy book. Kenny Pedrero. He's quick. He's six foot three. He's got an overall of 57 to 77. He's potentially 72 to 94. I might explode with excitement. That is a stunning find. Like properly mouth open, stunned, kind of speechless, don't really know what to say. He's an unbelievable player. Rolly Sepp in just one fell swoop was like, there you go. Sorted, lads. Bench Mac on Ethiopia. Try and pronounce some of these names. Oh my goodness. There's a right back here. Aob Walder Michael. Got a great potential. 13 years old, though. Will take a slot in the Youth Academy for a long time. And we are running out of slots. Other good players. Striker Samson Estefanos. Great name. Does he fit the culture of the club? No. Will he have to move away from striker? Probably. Just another great baseline, though, to work upon. Some quality, quality finds. I'm not expecting the same from Keone Sola. 60 to 69, 65 to 89, 69 to 93, and 68 to 90. He is called Dontrong Dat. Mm, yes. Uh, let's remove these top two. Youth squad's already full. Fortunately, what we've got in these reports are mostly 16 and 17 year olds. They can be promoted into the first team alongside Tony Oggiogio. I'm still quite reluctant to get rid of Aurelio Patti from this youth team because we have no other goalkeepers and therefore we wouldn't be able to participate in the youth tournaments, even though in the final of the youth tournament, I played Raw Killing in the net. So make of that what you will. Junior Tassip needs work, like serious work. I'll bring up Tony Oggiogio. That will then give us space to start moving players from these scout reports up to the first team. So quick cuts for you. Firstly, Yurko Torres. Oh, I thought that was power shot. It's actually ping pass as a play style. He might turn into a striker himself. I don't know. He's so big. Why is the central attacking midfielder six foot three? Next up, Marcus Bendananya. Oh, what is this? Finesse shot, flare, and aerial. Weird combination of play styles to have. Here comes Kenneth Pedrero. One million pound valuation. Got chip shot as the play style which works out. Just double check in on this Ethiopian report. We're going for Samson Estefanos. Aob will also be signed up but not just yet. I do like press proven as a play style. Vietnam we go for Doan Trong that. First team is going to be absolutely packed. Finesse shot on this lad. Do I want Duong Juan Tam? Has he got a chance 
chance to make it? Probably not. That's my decision. Goodbye, Tam. And A up, A up. Absolutely brilliant scouting report. Let's recall all these scouts. Got so many countries still to get to, including the Seychelles. Congratulations, Jonathan. Your comment was randomly picked and will be added to the scouting pool. Right, let's see what's going on in this scenario then. 46 players in the first team. We are reaching quite a critical point in terms of squad numbers. 16. So the 16th player down will be excluded from this episode. No, that doesn't really work because Sonbat Youngen is out on loan and wouldn't be playing anyway. 25. It's one of the new lads, Marcos Bendenanya. I gotta be real, mate. It's not the greatest introduction, is it? You come into the team and you take something that you shouldn't really take. Tobias Stanner ain't gonna be too pleased with that. Let's roll and see how far Bendenanya is going up. You got four. Yes. We'll take it. Puts Marcus Bendenanya on the same level as Rob Smeaton. 66. He can see here with his positional spread. He's already pretty good out wide. Left winger he'd be 64. Overall left midfielder 65. So that's where we're probably going to start pushing him. It'll take him 13 weeks to move to a right midfielder. Right, I hope you guys have got your head around that. A lot of new players coming in. Two players going out. I've been talking to a lad on Patreon, Thomas. He asked for the Australian scouting reports. Wasn't particularly bowled over with the choices that we did promote into the first team. I was very honest and didn't really think that Solari or Glenn Cross was going to make it. So what we've decided to do is put Australia back into the pool and get these lads transfer listed as soon as possible. They can rot in the reserves for all we care. Sampson, right-footed player. I would imagine that going to right winger does not take too long. 27 weeks. He would be better as a cam. Maybe an understudy to Ruwako. He would still need to improve that crossing. Anything else to talk about in this main menu before? before we start off playing the games. I have no money. Jesus Christ. All them signings have just obliterated the bank account. Yeah, whoops. I thought I was doing something sensible leaving one million pounds in the budget. Turns out I needed far more. Here's the opponent analysis for 13th place Wickham Wanderers. They've only won one of their last five games. It is a 4-3-3 flat and your tactical preset is the Swiss style. Oh my God, Alfie Hanford's out on international duty. You are kidding me right now. We haven't got a goalkeeper. Rico Walden, please get into the net. Oh, no, 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 no. And because Rico Walden goes into the net, we haven't got that many center backs to cover. It's a problem for a little bit later on. We talk tactics here. Instead of me dilly-dallying, I would like you guys to send the code from your career mode. It's a new feature for FC25, and I just really want to try it out. We did have one code shared with us in the comment section of last episode, so we are just going to roll with it. Give me a second. I'm sure I'll figure this out eventually. Uh, mate, these menus are shocking. Oh, there it is. Use code. That is a 4231 narrow. I will name the tactic after the creator. Okay, advance forward, shadow striker, two playmakers, two deep lying playmakers, a couple of false backs so the wingers will try and add to the midfield. Walden as a sweeper keeper scares me senseless. It's not very Ruwako friendly, but I'll give it a good shot. So with a ton of new additions to the first team, we're seeing more and more players players with them hideous default boots. So down in the comments section, put in a boot manufacturer and a colour and let's get these guys sorted. There'll be a few winning comments. Those will be applied to random players. A very, very weird looking Chesterfield team. But I'm actually quite relieved that we've got more players that we can use as strikers just so it can give some respite to Kjart Tenson. I'm expecting big things. Wickham Wanderers against Chesterfield. Go on, Yerko Torres. Show me something different, lad. Oh, they are big boys. <laughs> Phenomenal. Yoko Torres has just smashed it out of play. That ain't what I'm talking about when I say show me something different. Oh, it's a much deeper defensive line. And it's got to be a long shot claimed by Walden. This does feel different. Torres is going for a power shot right down the keeper's throat. It almost feels as though I have no midfield, which is not pleasant. It is, however, structurally sound. Wickham not causing too much of a problem unless I become an idiot. Jabodu running into trouble and we are behind. There's got to be a way of applying some kind of really decent defensive structure with attacking play. Wickham just backing off this 
midfield play. It's Tony Oggio trying to apply them power shots into the first team. We need more attacking intent. Well done, Pedrero. This is it. Torres not going in. This is almost custom made for Enos Jam. Look at the time that we've got. Oggio moves it on to Estefanos. Pension's going for a power shot that smashes the post. One minute of added time, one more shot maybe. Estefanos blocked by Hartridge. Referee happy to play on it. Another Estefanos shot and George is in the way. Chesterfield now starting to get on the front foot. It would be wonderful if Jam was on the bench. That is not the case. Maybe have a try with Rob Smeet and second half. We've had 10 shots, three on target. This comeback definitely possible. I'm stunned how much space they're giving Torres, man. It is just a very, very defensive setup. Estefanos going for it. Oh, we're getting closer and closer. Somehow Bancroft is our corner kick take. Pension down to Christy Mayer from the corner kick. Jibodu onto Torres. And that's another Wickham hold. And at the other end, Ado is flying towards goal. Rico Walden coming out and being brave. Well played. Just a quick comment on Chris Bancroft. There's not that many highlights that I can show you, but there has been a rather noticeable improvement in his form. More consistent, less mistakes. I'm going to be devastated if we lose this. What is Jabodu doing? The lad is on incredibly thin ice. Surely that's an offside call waiting to happen. Walden gets a touch. It's good enough for me. Two added minutes and Tony Oggio quickly setting up Pedrero. And even though we were on an attack, referee has seen enough. It's a disappointment. Chesterfield certainly the better team there. But for all our knocking at the door, we couldn't find the back of the net. The two Australians have got themselves transfer offers. Let's try and negotiate for the best price. Sivaspor happy to part ways with £1.3 million for David Solari. And we might get half a million for Glenn Cross. With the pennies that we've got left, we could probably sell three scouting networks. Works. I don't think it'll be European or South American countries, but so long as the scouts are doing something, I'm quite happy. Here's the current list of nations. There's a few European nations in there I can see. Probably talking about 10 or 11 nations affordable right now. Seven. Seven is Tanzania. Sorry, I didn't understand. You don't need to understand, Google. I'm not talking to you. It's already showing us that South America is too expensive. Africa. Apologies. I don't Please shut up. I'm not talking to you, Google. Google can improve but it would help bro satisfied you with my response. i'm not satisfied just shush please just please just shut up please just best. shut up stop it google shush shush baby please all right welcome to yuko ek's haiku chronicles with your host yuko ek when a duck walked up to a lemonade stand he got kicked in the head has a duck got to do with any of this? Tanzania is 20 grand. We can certainly stretch to 20 grand. I'm thinking centre back. Centre back for all of them. Why not? We'll just change up these roles. So, Tanzania ball playing defender. Nine. Nine is Kenya. That is a YouTube comment winner. Yes, thank you. Probably talking Eastern Africa. There it is. Centre back. Stopper. Ten. The final country selected is Cambodia. Next time you'll see the scouts is on the 13th of October when they return. Here's the opponent analysis for Stockport County. Fourth place, doing really well in League One this season. 68 attack, 65 midfield, 63 defense. They might be in fourth place, but they've only won two of their last five. So it's rather mid-form. ticky tack of football. And for this game's tactic, I'm going to resort to Twitter. Oh, it seems like no one can spell tactics correctly. Another 4-2-3-1. This guy has got a 4-2-1-3. Not a pro player has 35 games in a row won. Oh, brother's got a 4-2-4. He's using the wingers as inside forwards. Mate, I've got to try that out. Counter build-up style, balanced defensive approach. It does use a box-to-box -box central midfielder. Both fullbacks are on fullback defend. That I have a good feeling about. How many of these tactics can you save at once? I hope it's like unlimited. I very much doubt it is though. The walking liability Aaron Jabodu has been dropped. Hanford is back. And who doesn't like a 4-2-4? Chesterfield against Stockport. Bro, don't take the throwing. I need to sneeze. 
Stop taking the throwing quick. I'm not too confident that taking tactics out of the ultimate team community is going to help out. But it could give Gotenza the first goal of the season. How has Sandri Roberto missed that? He's gone. He's never going to play for this football club again. What a waste of money. Is he on like 10 grand a week? Tackle, big by Chris Bancroft. It's just consistent defensive work that is bringing him up the pecking order of centre-backs. Krasutsky looks like the option. He's actually played it into Kjord Tansen. Now Enos Jam trying to find a gap. And he might do it, you know. Enos Jam not on target. I think what I've been getting wrong with my formations is how high the defensive line is. I'm learning a lot. I'm learning as we go. Trying to get the best out of our players. How about that for a delivery? It's in the back of the net. Easy as you like for Stockport County. No one marking up. Yeah, this is like proper, proper tactical brain on. Much more like football manager in a sense. You're trying to find the right balance. Bancroft's got two to look after. Hanford pushes it straight back into the attacker's feet, which is not what I would have tried to do in that situation. Darassi to Enos Jam. That slide tackle's actually helped us out and given Enos Jam way more time with the ball poor touch could have been in there go on Chris Bancroft great block I honestly don't know what's gone into him he's just turned the corner Chris Bancroft is starting to become a very good centre back here Ruoko surely gonna find a ball here has Krasutski got the speed yes the standing tackle a little bit too early Krasutski into the onion bag I feel this much more exciting football the 4-2-4 is a Alive and well. Only 39% of the possession for Chesterfield in this second half. Jack Diamond tearing us up. Lovely finish there. Sent Darassi back in with his speed. Krasutsky hasn't healed up from that injury earlier on. Bringing Tobge moves Soriman to the centre. I'm going to edit the tactics slightly and put Enos Jam onto Playmaker. So his focus is just attacking. Smeaton can go and do all the dirty work. Here's hoping that works to our strengths. Enos Jam still trying to tackle players. Stockport County in again. Nail in the golf. I've had absolutely no time to react to this Stockport County momentum. They've started scoring goals for fun. Unfortunately, we have taken a bit of a backseat. Tobge into Kjartansson. Now then, is there going to be another goal for the home side? Kjartansson gets his first goal of the season. Game is not over just yet. It's a standing tackle by Bancroft. And he squeezes it through the gap. As the referee added anything on at all. It's not showing up. That might be the end of the game. We're just going to fall short. 3-2 the final score. However, there's a lot of good things to take from that. If we see progression like we've seen on Bancroft on some of the other defenders, we can surely lower the goals conceded. Krasutsky suffered a hyperextended knee injury. He's out for four weeks. Just a bit more time for the new lads coming in from that chilly report to settle in. Glenn Cross has moved clubs. That is confirmed and probably a price rating of A. And Siversport signs up David Solari. So we're falling down the table. 18th place now. At least we're doing better than Mansfield Town. The team that we're facing up against today has had a rather solid start to the season. 6th place Tramia Rovers. They got promoted with us but are flying high in League 1. Kick and rush football for. 4-2 formation. Davison looks like he might be on the bench and he was the handful. Surely it's not only me who thinks we can turn these guys over, especially with the new formation. Bit more tweaking on this. I've changed the wingers from inside forward to winger. Lineup hasn't changed that much. It's a debut for Dat on the left wing. My apologies. Davison is playing, so I'm not free of his shenanigans just yet. He's already causing things to happen. He's played the ball into Norris and Tranmere are ahead within three minutes. We're sinking too fast here. Dat into the box! Scott Sanson! At least get it on target. Bancroft yellow carded for some reason. I have a feeling things are starting to knit together. We can cross that ball into Scott Sanson! I thought that was on target. It wasn't destined for the top corner. So desperately close there to the equalising goal. That waits for Torres. Kjartansson's onside. 
will try and take on Walker. Not the highest overall. Enos Jemmy just found it. Pure tension. It's 1-1. I think we've got this. I think we've got Tramir in the back pocket. Patrick trying to go down the line. Duras has got to do a bit better than that. Hanford, I think, has just saved it with his face. We have sold the worry of the 4-2-4. There's more options there for forward passes. Easy forward passes. And I tell you something, Dat's having a terrific game. Kjot Sanson chips the goalkeeper. He's got a chase for it now. Kjot Sanson scoring on the regular. This is a closer representation to the Chesterfield that we saw last season. Durassi to smash this away. Half time in the lead against Tranmere. I feel with the wingers set up like this, Ruocco could have a field day. Davison yet again pulling strings. Pem and Bancroft team up. Still can't get the ball clear. Norris there for his second, and it's back to square one. Patrick trying to use the skills on the outside for Durassi. Bancroft decides to pass it with his back to his goalkeeper. What kind of confidence does this man possess? Is he going to ask out Margot Robbie? I wouldn't put it past him. Corner kick, Tranmere. Hanford's coming out, and then he decides to go back into his net. Davison to Patrick. He's trying to bully Durassi. Someone needs to mark up in the centre, please! I'm not too sure where Hanford was going there. Davison into Patrick. Shooting opportunity! Front post! And I hate to say it, the fears of Davison destroying us were absolutely validated. It is painful because I can see the progression. It's just a better quality of team up here in League One. Every single game, we're a little bit outclassed. Only a little bit. It's quality by Tranmere. Davison has a goal that nobody can take away from him. Another well, slight tackle on Enos Jammer. Can't seem to get his runs together with this formation. They play the wingers deeper in a 4-4-2. Hanford can't keep hold of the ball. It's Amari Patrick for five. And it was all looking so good at half-time. Enos Jam's got an injury. Things going from bad to worse. Amari Patrick hits the post and there's Norris for a hat-trick. I don't know, guys. You think you've got the answer. Then all of a sudden you're stumped again. You would never believe that this was 2-1 going into the break. Whatever Tramia did at half-time was truly remarkable. It gives me more information on what I want from each and every player. That is your one and only silver lining. Let's get back into the team management. Change this to a 4-4-2. We're gonna move Jam away from Ruwako, playing him right central midfielder, and then someone like Saruman, who does have that bite in him, can play wide midfield defend and cover whatever Jam gets up to up front. Surely that works. Come on, let's get a big, big result. We're at home against fourth place Wigan. They haven't lost in the last five. If we somehow defeat them, that's me happy for the episode. Tiki tacker football for the opposition. Right, everybody focus up. This is Chesterfield against Wigan. Tell me that we've struck gold. That's better. Look at the space that Enos Jam has got now. Can't believe we've gone to a 4-4-2. Four, 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 well done, Hanford. Rico Walden needs to stick with a man in the centre. Back post! Oh, that's Billy Blissett's problem. Asher Mawa with a free header. I'm not willing to give up. I know that there's something right about this tactic. Billy Blissett goes out wide. Soriman into Enos Jam, who somehow keeps hold of the ball! And his shot gives Tickle some work in that Wigan net. Christy Mayer's got a lot of chasing to do. Not a single player in that box wants to mark up. Ruocco trying to make some magic happen. He's a little bit lonely on that left-hand side. Smeaton now going into Kjartans and Ruocco onside in the box. And he will set up Pedrero. It's bubbling all over the place. Ruocco! Top corner, Ruocco and Loco. We really have to get the most out of him. He has got superstar quality. Nearing the end of the first half. Keep your concentration. Bancroft touch tight. We know what happened against Tramiel. Let's not see a repeat of it. Bancroft on the chase. The ball roll gets around him. Oh, Asamo with a terrible miss. 
near the six yard box. Saruman there to take the ball off Billy Blissett. Bancroft wants to move into the midfield. Now Enoch Jam. Pedrero occupying the centre. So Enoch Jam moves out wide. Now Pedrero drops into Kjartansson. It's a wonderful goal from Chesterfield. And that is what we can do if the tactics are there working to our favour. Passing accuracy has been sublime. 90%. Enos Jam, yes, this is the long shot. Oh! We've done it! This is the formation, guys! One Enos Jam long shot, and he absolutely blasts it into the top corner. Oh my god, it's an arrow! It's a thunderbolt! Surely there's no coming back. Rico Walden gets a booking in the celebrations. I hope he didn't take his top off. There's kids in the stadium, lad. Why don't you go and settle yourself down ahead or away? Andrew Saruman looks like he was built for the role that we've just given him. Smeaton on to Enos or oh, Smith! has completely taken him out. There's an injury symbol on Rob Smeaton. That's full time. It's a win. It's three points. And yet I can't be like completely elated because if Smeaton's got a broken toe, then it's two steps forward and one step back. But that was easily the most balanced performance. The most defensively sound performance. Yes, mate. Enos Jam player of the match. Proper inspirational. You tell the world. I see no information about a Rob Smeaton injury. He's fine to play on, so that's a big, big win against Wigan. Buzzing after that. Wesley Purpleheart will be pulling out his hair, knowing that Tobias Tanner is ahead of him in the Football League standings. Not even surprised that the team of the week has Chris Bancroft and Enos Jam in it. Genuinely stunned at the rise that Bancroft is having in this team. And we're back to FC 25, just giving us so much joy. This has been Cutsy. Thank you ever so much for watching this episode of Youth Squad Legends. If you've enjoyed it, then please give the video a like if not subscribe around here yet. Then press the red box down below and hit the bell icon for mobile notifications. A big thanks to everybody on the right hand side supporting me financially on Patreon. You can too with the link down in the description box below. If you want a particular nation that you want to add into the scouting pool, pledging over there will guarantee it. A big thanks to each and every one of y'all watching this series episode in, episode out. You take care. See you next time. Bye bye. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Youth Squad Legends. Please consider subscribing. If you don't subscribe, I will delete the channel. Hey, nothing like a bit of blackmail there, Google. I like you thinking.